Okay, this next idea was uh, suggested to me by Manuel999, bless his heart. And um, what he was talking about was the conductivity of uh, magnetite. So I thought I'd make some. Now what you need to make some magnetite is um, some spirits of salts. This is in fact concentrated hydrochloric acid. And um, some household ammonia. These you can buy at any hardware store. Some hydrogen peroxide. I got this from a chemist. It's uh, I think nine percent by volume. Some wire wool. Now you need to do this in um, a well-ventilated space or outside because the hydrochloric acid, the drink, and the ammonia give up a lot of fumes and they're really quite stinky. Uh, and I think the hydrochloric acid is fuming chlorine. So best thing to do is do it outside. Now, because my camera's in here and it's um, really cold outside, I'm just sitting in a well-ventilated room. And it is a well-ventilated room. Okay? So the first thing you need to do is um, measure out a little bit of your spirit of salts, get your wire wool, and drop it in there. Now, that will begin to fizz and cook almost straight away. You can see it going to kind of a white colour there. And that will dissolve the iron wool. As you leave that over time, the iron wool will dissolve completely and leave nothing at all but a few little black specks. And those little black specks are um, the remains of the carbon that's left in there. You need to filter that. It'll go kind of a green colour. And you filter it out and that's what you'll get. This kind of green and this is iron 2 chloride. Okay. Now you're going to need to make some iron 3 chloride. So what I did was separate out the iron 2 into um, one third in one um, jar and two thirds in the other jar. So you separate out your um, iron 2 chloride, iron 3 chloride, separate it out into two separate sections once you've made it. So remember to make it, drop the iron wall in your drain cleaner, in your hydrochloric acid, it will dissolve. It'll turn this to the liquid green with a few bits of muck in the bottom. Filter it and you'll get iron 2 chloride, the green stuff. Okay. Now it's a fairly violent reaction, it is very smelly, do it outside. Once you've done that, divide it into one third in one cup, two thirds in another cup. Get your hydrogen peroxide, and in your larger one, just drop the hydrogen peroxide in there. It'll fizz a little bit, and I don't know if you, there you go, you can see that, it's gone an amber colour. Now once it goes that amber colour, it's on 3 chloride. So just keep adding your little bit of there of your hydrogen peroxide until you don't get any more change. There we go, and we get that nice bright amber colour. Now with these two, so you've got your iron 2 chloride, your iron 3 chloride in a ratio of 1 to 2, just mix them together. And it'll go that blackish colour. I should say that the iron 3 chloride is in fact PCB etchant. So you can use it to um, etch circuit boards if you want to. So once you've done that, put a little bit of your household ammonia in a jar. Take this, oh, there we go, take this stuff that you mixed here before and chuck the one into the other. And immediately it'll precipitate out into that black. That black is your magnetite. There we go. Precipitate it out nicely. Okay. The next thing we need to do is to get that out of there. Okay, so we actually made the magnetite now, and now we want to get it out. The easiest way of getting it out is to um, centrifuge it. Now, uh, if you saw my earlier video, uh, you saw me make a centrifuge. And here's my centrifuge tube. So pour your liquid into there. centrifuge and centrifuge it. Not take long. Once you centrifuge it for a bit, take out the thing, and you can see it's still black there, but if you spin that for a bit longer and a bit faster, all of that magnetite will sink out to the bottom. You can pour off the top liquid and keep on doing it until you've got all of it. Now, I've obviously got a little bit of centrifuging to do to get to clear all of this up, so I'll do that and get back to you. 
So I finished the centrifuging of it, washed it, centrifuged it, washed it, centrifuged it. I did that three times in order to get rid of all the ammonia and acid kicking around with all the spare salts. And what I ended up with was a vial of magnetite. Now I mixed that with some gum arabic so that it um, made an ink for me and um, painted a line with the ink. There it is and tested its resisti resistivity, which was about 16 mega ohms, so um, incredibly high and not very useful as a conductive ink. However, um, when I was doing the research on this thing, to try and find out how to make it and to mix them, um, I found out some really fascinating information about this stuff. Magnetite, it seems, is a really good microwave absorber. So if you mix that with about 10% carbon and paint it on the inside of a vessel, it will absorb the energy and then re-radiate it out as heat. Now there's a whole um, group of people selling things on the internet called microwave furnaces and the basis of that microwave furnace is this stuff. So if you mix some of this and get yourself a big old pot of plaster of Paris or some kind of um, heat resistant ceramic, it's not going to crack because it, it'll get up to about a thousand degrees. Paint this stuff on the inside of it, pop it in your microwave and put some um, metal in there or some clay, you can fire clay, you can smelt metal. So that is the secret of a um, microwave furnace. So that's another project I'm going to have to do. Okay. Now the other thing is, obviously, if you just pop that in the microwave, then it's going to reach its own central temperatures. So it's going to fuse. So there's a very good chance that we'll be able to use that stuff to make a um, ferrite cores of any shape. So what you do is make it, get the powder, dry the powder, compact it into the shape that you want, pop it in your microwave, uh, I don't know, something that's just not going to break when it gets too hot. Turn it on for a few minutes and it'll glow and then it'll fuse itself into the shape that you've compacted it in and you'll have yourself a ferrite rod of um, the right shape. Now a lot of the experiments that you see uh, use ferrite or um, compacted iron filings in resin to make curious shaped rods. Well here's a possible method of making your own rods uh, to whatever shape you want. It's a, a yet another thing that I want to try. But the other thing that you can do with it, uh, in itself is quite fascinating, is if you mix it with a bit of 3-in-1 oil, there we go, and I don't know if you're able to see this, yes there you go, <laughs> it's a ferrofluid. Okay, so a actually really interesting experiment. So to recap, what you do is you mix some wire wool with some hydrochloric acid, drink cleaner, and leave it enough time for it to go green and for all the wire wool to dissolve. Put some more wire wool in, keep on doing it until no more wire wool will go in, then filter it. That liquid you've got, the green liquid you've got, is iron 2 chloride. If you add hydrogen peroxide to that, you get an amber liquid. That amber liquid is a PCB etchant, iron 3 chloride, so you could use it to etch your PCBs if you want. If you split it in a ratio of 2 to 1 iron 3 to iron 2 chloride, mix them, add them to ammonia, what you'll get is magnetite. That magnetite can be made into a paint that you can use to make um, a microwave oven furnace, your own ferrite cores. And, and those are the two projects I'm actually really interested in. So, thank you, thank you, man, 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 man. It was a really interesting experiment, and it's sort of yet more things that really need investigation.